Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Sean Cole, and for those of you out there who are fans of the show, you probably already know this, but I'm a bit of a gadget freak, and today is no exception to that. I have a new gadget that I get to play with, and that makes me very excited. And that gadget today is NVIDIA 3D Vision 2.0. And I gotta tell you, a while back, we did test out 3D Vision for the first time. Myself, Darren, and Jessica, we are all completely blown away by it. And you can actually see that original review on our website and see everything we had there. And in that review, I actually went into great detail on how to set up NVIDIA 3D Vision. But today, we're actually doing NVIDIA 3D Vision 2.0. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time working on setup because not a lot has changed there, as I mentioned. So if you want to know how to set it up, watch that original review. Today, what I'm going to focus on is the difference between 3D Vision 2.0 and 3D Vision, the original. And the first thing you can see is there is obviously a difference in the glasses. So before I get too far into the differences between the glasses and more, one thing I gotta disclaim is you probably can't even see what's going on behind me on my screens because we are watching in 3D vision. So without these glasses and the emitter that's on the monitor, you're not gonna see this image the same way I am. You're gonna have to kinda just take my word for it. So there are some differences in the technology, but a lot of things remain the same. The glasses themselves have been remodeled, but the principle behind them is the same. They're still shutter glass technology, meaning that the glasses are literally flicking left, right, left, right, left, right. And on the image on the screen, we have the exact same thing going on. It's actually giving you two images to the naked eye, it looks simultaneous, but it's actually in conjunction with the left, right, left, right of the glasses. That's all the same. So what is new? The glasses have been redesigned and you can tell the lenses themselves are a lot larger. And that means that you have a larger viewing angle. So when I'm using my giant triple screens here, I can see more of the entire image without turning my head through the larger lenses. Another thing that they did to the glasses is very nice. They made it, you can see this bend is out of there. And that bend is what interfered on the original with headphones and I do run in headphones often so that does make it a little bit more comfortable. Another thing they did different to the glasses is the larger shape has a little blocker here and it blocks out a little bit more ambient light so you don't need to have your room quite as dark and you don't get nearly as much back reflection in the lenses. So right there, that's most of the differences in the glasses as you see them here in my hand. Another difference is the way it works with we're looking at new monitors here. I'm using these Asus 27 inch monitors that didn't even exist back when we did our original reviews back on like 22 inch monitors. So there's a big difference in viewing angle. Another thing that's different about the monitors is I mentioned it already, the emitter is actually built into the monitor and the signal is going through the DVI cable. It means that I don't need a separate emitter to sit on top. And that also means it's not being plugged into my USB. It just happens automatically. And the last and the biggest difference of all is actually that these new 27 inch ASUS monitors are light boost technology. They're LED backlit. And to be really honest with you, I have no idea what that means, but I do know what the end result is. They're actually twice as bright as the original monitors we tested. So if you go back to our original review, you'll notice one of our cons was that the screens were very dark and this completely eliminates that from the cons list. Now, despite all those differences, the glasses are redesigned, but functionally they work the same. All the technology will work and the light boost stuff will work with the old glasses or the new one and vice versa. You could actually use these new glasses, which I think of one more thing that I forgot to mention about the redesign. These actually fit over prescription glasses. So John Hill was here and he was actually able to put these right over his glasses. No problem at all. Now I wanna get back to the light boost and it being two times brighter. Another one of the cons for us, not only the dim screens, but also it was a little claustrophobic, the overall feeling and that darkness also made it hard for my eyes to acclimate quickly when running in 3D. That light boost technology completely changes that as well. It, it, the claustrophobic feeling completely goes away and your eyes adapt to the 3D that much quicker because of it. 
Now, before I get into the pricing of everything here, I just want to talk one more little thing that I did like about these new monitors. It's hard to tell with them turned on right now, but they actually have a matte finish on the screen. They're not glossy. So I always noticed in 3D that I didn't get any glare whatsoever, but even in non-3D times, you'll notice that these get no glare. Very, very good monitors. So now let's talk about how much we've invested to be running triple screens, 27 inch running 3D 2.0 version. Right out of the gate, these monitors are very new and therefore very expensive. You're looking at about $600 a piece. So we're looking at $1,800 in monitors. The other thing is I wanted to be able to run my 3D at a very high performance. Therefore, I'm running with two GTX 580 video cards by Nvidia. Those video cards go for about $400 a piece. So right there, I have an additional $800. That takes the grand total to $2,600 to basically be running 3D in triples at a high frame rate. That does make it very expensive. However, on this version, the monitors actually do come with the emitter and a pair of glasses. So that's not an additional purchase. It's included in the price of the monitor. So now it's time to move on to the pros and cons of 3D Vision 2.0. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a quick break, and when I return, we will go into the pros and cons, and I'll have some final thoughts for you. Tania's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tania, visit us at www.taniausa.com. Welcome back to my review of NVIDIA 3D Vision 2.0 and now it is time to go into the pros and cons of this 3D Vision we've been talking about. I do want to remind you also if you do get this set up and you want to know about how to set it up on your machine, that original review went into every detail about how to set it up, how to get your monitors aligned, how to get all of the 3D stuff working and maximize. Now it's time for some pros and cons. And I'm going to go through these pretty quick because I've already mentioned a lot of them in building up to this point. So right out of the bat, much brighter displays, and that makes a very big difference as a driver, especially when wearing the glasses, especially when doing long races. And that leads me to my next pro. And with the 2.0 version, I found less disorientation and that my eyes did acclimate faster. Another pro is the larger lenses giving you a larger viewing angle. The glasses have been remodeled and are much better this time around. Next is the emitter being built into the monitor and that saves you one USB making it even cooler. Another pro are that the new glasses are actually more comfortable, especially when wearing headphones and you can wear prescription glasses under them. Some of the other pros are some of the pros from our original review and that's the way that 3D completely changes gaming. You see things in a way that you've never seen them before. Incredible judgment of braking distances and being able to see the apex on turn in. Another pro from the original review is that the screens completely disappear. You don't see the bezels anymore. You don't see the glass. You're just completely immersed in the game. Another pro is that you can watch 3D movies or play any 3D ready games that are available on the PC, not just for PC sims like we do. And the last pro is really something that we again covered from the original, and that's just the way it changes my gaming. Looking at the cockpits, they're just so much more realistic. Looking at eye racing, it gives it so much more light and depth and orientation. You feel like you're really there when you're running in 3D. So obviously there's a lot good about 3D. Now let's move into some of the cons. The first one is still from the original, and that's the cost. Even on a single screen option, you're looking at a pretty good upgrade to your system. Another con is that you must wear glasses. That can be tough with headphones, and for me, it adds to the heat factor. Another con is that the game must be played at 60 frames. For some people, that's just not fast enough. 
Another con that could occur for some people is that there could be a slight strain on the eyes. It could even make them a little bit dizzy or even a little nauseous. And that's not something that I've personally experienced, but I have had or seen some people who've had that little problem. Another con is that it's actually a little bit of a resource hog. It takes a lot of firepower to get double images running in triple screens, so it costs you some money and it costs you a little performance on your computer as well. And the last con that I can really think about is that you really need to be wearing these glasses to see the effects of 3D. I mean, you probably can't see what's going on behind me. It means a friend comes over, they're going to need to wear the glasses as well to see what's going on. Now, in my case, I was lucky. My monitors each came with a pair of glasses, which means I have three, plus I got some of the old ones as well, and they are crisscross compatible, and therefore anybody can watch me, but that is a consideration for a lot of you out there. So, there are some cons. There's a lot of pros to this. Now, let's talk about how I really feel overall about 3D vision. You know, I'm gonna start things off with a debate that we've been having here in the shop a lot, and that's the difference between being a sim racer and a sim driver. Sim racers are people who are looking for every tenth or thousandth of a second that they can possibly get, and they are looking for any advantage. These guys are typically frame rate watchers, and they are also the minimalistic type when it comes to their sim rigs and their setups. Keep it simple, make it run fast, and win races. And the other type is a sim driver. And a sim driver is looking for every bit of realism, every bit of ooh and ah factor that we can throw into these sims. Having additional gadgets adds to the immersion, adds to the driving experience. These are the drivers that 3D is best suited for. And your mileage may vary. Some may think that being a better judge of distance or having better depth perception may be the advantage they're looking for. So for me, I have now run many a 3D races over a longer period. And I can tell you, I've done a lot of it as a sim driver. And to experience it in that way as a sim driver, I easily give this a 10 out of a 10. Now as a sim racer, sometimes I'm a little more hardcore and my jury is still out as to whether this is how I would want to race every single race. I've done my share of races this way and I've certainly performed well, but if I were going to sit down right now for a very long race against the best of the best in the business, I'm still the guy looking for thousands of a second and any advantage that I can get. Now there is good news on the horizon for even the most hardcore frame rate counter there is. I've heard that the new 680 cards will run uncapped frames, meaning that we could actually be running 3D in unlimited frames just like we do in 2D. And that could be a big step up for that group in particular. Now I'm certain that the future is here now. We're running 3D. We have all this technology here for us. And therefore, we've now started a new page at our website. It's the NVIDIA page. And there you're gonna find our original review. You're gonna find my interview with Joe Grover talking about how the technology works. And you're gonna be able to find this review as well as we're gonna start putting cool setup stuff you need to know. Certain tweaks you might make to this sim or that sim when running in 3D. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of 3D Vision 2.0, and I hope it gives you all the information you might need to know if you're considering such a thing. So for now, I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track in 3D.